There's no take two. There's no just a little more purple. Warts and all. You've downloaded the VO Radio Show. Welcome to another VO Radio Show. I'm Andrew Peters, and up in Sydney... With a mouthful of coffee is Robbo. How are you, mate? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I've had my coffee. I'm feeling good. Uh, it's that time in the morning, let me tell you. It is a bit like that this morning, I must yeah, admit. Yeah, yeah. I'm just looking at that first script going, OK, let's get ourselves ready. <laughs> yeah, well, talking about such things, you've been reading an article which uh, goes through all that stuff. From I have. Uh, a mutual friend of ours, Abby Holmes, yeah. who's a voiceover artist, um, has posted a little article on LinkedIn, um, three things that you should do before you enter the voiceover studio. Now, I'm not a voiceover artist, but I read it and sort of thought that there was a lot of gold in there for um, for people who are getting themselves started in the industry or even for people like yourself who have been in the industry for a long time. So I thought I would roll the three things off to you and just see what your take on it was. Okay, cool. Hit me. So the first one, she says, is are you ready for anything? She says, one of the things we all love about voiceover is that we seldom know what the session will contain. We rarely see the script beforehand and often we're working with new producers. It's so important that whenever you're invited into the studio, you're in good shape physically and rested and ready to go. I reckon that's really good advice. Um, sometimes you're not going to be rested because, you know, sometimes you get a call where you've got to be there at nine o'clock in the morning mm. and, you know, there may have been something on the night before, so... What do you do? You know, you can't cancel your social life necessarily to fit in with a nine o'clock session. But you've also got to be mindful of it. But it, ideally, in a, in a perfect world, yes. But in a lot of cases in, in major cities that we live in, you could be sitting in the car for two hours before you get there. Oh, yes, exactly. So you're not really in a good place by the time you get to the studio. Yeah, especially like if it was a day like here in Sydney yesterday, 44 degrees, sitting in traffic trying to get to a voiceover gig. I can't imagine that would be um, too much fun turning up. Are you ready to go? Hmm, yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. Well, maybe point number two leads to that. Says She says, are you warmed up? She says, warming up your voice before you work is essential. I do some really simple exercises, purring and blowing raspberries, running through each of the consonants and following it with each of the vowels, as in... But a, but e, but i, but o, but o. It will make a huge difference to your performance. Do you warm up of a morning, or do you do you warm up before each session? How do you do it? Uh, well, I don't, um, which is probably a bit naughty, really, because I know just about everybody else does. The only thing I ever get told off about, or given friendly advice by the old producer, is uh, well, one in particular um, is use your lips. He will say, use your lips, push your lips out. So if you get a bit slurry or you're just sort of not quite hitting everything clearly, mm. if you actually push your lips forward, like I'm doing right now, you can actually hit. But think of Alan Rickman and yeah. uh, that that kind of like the forward lips. It actually cleans everything up quite a lot. So that's a handy hint. I was going to say I should do exercises really. And yeah. uh, one of the good ones, that that's a good one that Abby's obviously talking about and she's been doing this for longer than me probably. Mm. Um, the other thing is using the uh, still method of warming up, which is the, the chipmunk kind of thing, the Elmo sort of noise where you push the back of your tongue up to the uh, soft palate at the back and then put a silly grin on and then make these kind of sirening noises because that <laughs> cleans all the vocal cords, gets all the muck off. Really? Which, yeah. So what's that sound like? Give us an example. A bit like that. Wow. And you can, you okay. can actually do different things. You can move it around, go deep, go high. But if you start at the top and work your way down to a really low register, uh, you'll find exactly where the muck is on your vocal cords So because yeah. it will start to break. And then you can just work on that area and then just clean that off. And then you'll have a nice, fresh, clean vocal cords ready for the session. So if you're stuck in the car, you look like an idiot, but um, <laughs> <laughs> you sound great when you get to the other end if you're not arrested. Like sound bit like Seinfeld. It wasn't a pick. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, yes. <laughs> well, let's move on to number three. Yep. Um, she says, how do you feel? She says, emotional stuff happens to us and that's life. We can be carrying melancholy of varying degrees, anxiety, hurt and all manner of personal issues. The thing is, you need to make sure these are not adversely affecting your work. Fear, anger, anxiety and nerves can all be heard in the voice. Do a little check before you get into the session. Deep breathe and have a gentle talk with yourself about being the best you can be. That's tricky, isn't it? If you could actually switch everything off when you go into a session, that would be perfect. And, you know, it's the, uh, I know it sounds like a 
a, a really poor excuse, but unfortunately people who tend to do things like this for a living usually have, you know, some uh, emotional issues. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so um, it's pretty... If, if you could fix it that easily, it'd be great. But... Um, yeah. I mean, it, look, if it's funny, though, because the other thing that happens when you go into a session, a lot of that stuff disappears anyway. Yeah. You know, you start getting, you're concentrating on what you're reading, you you know, you talk, interacting with people. Like, you can turn up, you can have a big stash with your partner. You can rock up at a studio and, you know, someone's there you actually really like. You start having a chat, how's your day, blah, 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 we've been up to, all that stuff's gone. And then, you know, you're ready to go and work. So if you don't know the people and you walk in, you know, not feeling in, in a good place and um, you've got no one to bounce off, that could be an issue, I think. Yeah. How many times have you had someone rock up when you've got a session when you know that they're in a, not in a good place? I, I, I've got, actually got one voiceover artist in mind. It's a female, but I'm not going to mention any names. But she always brings her baggage to the session. <laughs> you always hear the first, the first, how are you, such and such. Oh, I can't believe my husband did this, my kids did this, my whatever, whatever, whatever. It's like you're almost afraid to answer, ask the question these days. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's like I, I love you and I love your voice. But leave that stuff at home, please. Yeah. I've had calls from uh, one radio station in particular. This was oh, quite a few years ago now. And it was like, how, how quickly can you get in here? Yeah. I, I can be there in 20 minutes, right? Get in here now. And what happened was the guy that was doing the voiceover before me, I don't know what was going on in his life, but he just absolutely lost the plot, started throwing pens around and things around in the booth. <laughs> The client was there, it was a, you know, it was a, like they brought oh, a client no, into no. the studio. It was just insane. They had to basically say, yep, that's great, got everything we need, thanks, mate, off you go. And it was like, you'll never work here again, pal. That's it all over. Wow. If I can throw one great gaff in there, there's a, he's a fairly well-known voiceover artist. I'm not going to, again, I'm not going to mention any names. And he's a lovely guy. In fact, he got me my start in radio. But when I first started working in advertising at a company called George Patterson's they got him in to do a voiceover and it was for Kelvinator or Electrolux or one of those electrical companies. Um, and he was standing in the voiceover booth and he was doing the ad and he said, now listen, instead of payment for this, um, I need a new fridge at home. Do you reckon there's any chance I could get a fridge? <laughs> <laughs> and the guy, the, we had the, my, the talk back turned off and the guy, the client was there and the client said, what's his voiceover worth? And I went, mm, you know, X amount. And he went, Mm, no, I don't think there's a fridge in that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know who that was. And if yeah, you- I'm sure you can guess. But, you know, studio etiquette, you know, I guess we've fallen into that and a bit off the subject, but, you know, studio etiquette, has, <laughs> there's a lot to it, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, there is indeed, is indeed. But, you know, that, that stuff that Abby's talked about, I think it's all valid. And, um, uh, and Abby's, you know, as I said, she's, uh, she's a top flight pro, so she knows what she's talking about. Yeah. Well, um, there you go. My next car trip with the kids, <laughs> I'm going to try that and see what they say. <laughs> yes, exactly. Oh, the sirening. Yeah, that could be interesting. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, there's another one out of the way. We'll uh, talk to you next week, I guess. Okay. Happy sirening. The VO Radio Show is produced in the studios of Voodoo Sound. To polish your next audio production, check us out at voodoo-sound.com. Find professional voices simply all in one place. Realtimecasting.com, including me.